I'm, I'm not taking them out. Pick, um, acting test. I'm going to do that. I think this is a... I don't know what that does. Yeah. Miss Rachel, are we ready to kick off? Okay. Good morning, everyone, uh, and Happy New Year, and thank you for coming out on a, on a very cold day. Uh, this is the Board of Adjustment. We will be, uh, in a few minutes, uh, begin to hear our cases for uh, this month. I would, uh, we would ask uh, for everyone uh, if you have a cell phone with you, of course, we all do nowadays, please put it, uh, turn it off or uh, put it to vibrate uh, uh, silence so that uh, uh, we won't have interruptions uh, during the time. It, it just makes it uh, easier on everybody. So... This is a meeting of the Escambia County Board of Adjustment for January the 17th, 2024, and is hereby called to order. With five members present, we have a quorum. Will the clerk please swear in the members of the staff? <coughs> Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be God? I do. Thank you. Members of the board, copies of the staff's resumes have previously been provided and remain on file for reference. The board has previously recognized the staff as expert witnesses. Does anyone have any questions regarding their qualifications and ability to offer expert testimony? Seeing none. The BOA meeting package for January the 17th, 2024, with the, the Development Services Staff Findings of Fact, has previously been provided to board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept the BOA meeting package into evidence. Do I have a motion? I move. We, we have uh, a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. <clears throat> this motion, of course, passes with, we now have six members, I believe, present, uh, uh, with all members in favor. Madam Clerk, do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, sir. The chair will now entertain a motion to waive the readings of the legal uh, advertisement. Do I have a motion? I move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of this motion, please raise your right hand. The motion passes with all members voting in the affirmative.
Members of the board, have you reviewed the resume and transcript for the Board of Adjustment meeting held on December the 20th, 2023? Upon your review of the resume and the transcript, are there any addition, deletions, or corrections? Seeing none, the board will, uh, the chair will now entertain a motion regarding the hearing resume for the Board of Adjustment meeting held on December the 20th, uh, 20, uh, 2023. Do I have a motion? I so move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We do have a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion passes with six members in favor of the motion and no members, of course, opposing. We now come to the purpose of the Board of Adjustment and the conduct of the meeting. The Board of Adjustments hears administrative appeals, variances, and conditional use requests. <clears throat> Excuse me. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature. Quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however less formal. All public testimony will be taken under oath, and anyone testifying before the BOA may be subject to cross-examination. -exam all documents and exhibits that the BOA considers are entered into evidence and made part of the record. The giving of opinion testimony will be limited to experts and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. After hearing the testimony and arguments for and against the proposed action and before making its decision, the BOA will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable law. Because decisions of the BOA relating to variances, conditional uses, and extensions of development order for site plan approval are final unless overturned by a court of competent jurisdiction, the county may issue development orders and permits for properties in accordance with the decisions of the BOA. However, if applicant requests the issuance of any such order or permit and such order or permit is issued, the applicant and not the county shall bear any risk that such decision may be set aside. The development order or permit may be revoked or the development may be otherwise enjoined by the reviewing court. Any applicant for relief from a decision of the BOA for said actions or any aggrieved party as defined by state law may seek, may seek review of such decision <coughs> by filing an appropriate pleading in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the BOA decision. The date of the BOA decision shall be the date the BOA voted at the conclusion of the meeting. Whenever the BOA denies an application, no new application for an identical action on the same parcel shall be accepted for consideration within a period of 180 days of the BOA decision. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the BOA relating to an appeal of an administrative decision may, within 15 days thereafter, apply to the circuit court for review. Each individual who wishes to address the board regarding a particular issue must complete a blue request to speak form and submit it to the clerk of court. Clerk of board, I'm sorry. These forms are located on the table at the back of the commission chambers. You will not be allowed to speak until we receive one of these completed request to speak forms. We must have these forms, we must have these completed <coughs> forms for public <coughs> record. Thank you. We now uh, will move into our first case. Uh, this is case number CU 2023-16 and all uh, located on Airport Boulevard 
it's a conditional use approval to allow outdoor storage requested by Scott Delaney or Garrett Baker, agents for Chris Tex Land Holdings and Pensacola Christian College Incorporated owners. And I believe this includes 104, 110, 112, 118, 122, 126, Airport Boulevard and one, the 100 block of Airport Boulevard. Before we begin, as you just heard, uh, the, bo the board will now be asked if any member has received any ex parte communications regarding this matter. <laughs> Seeing none. Has anyone obtained knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none. I will remark for the purposes of the record, I do travel Airport Boulevard. I have not made a site visit uh, to this area and I uh, don't exactly know uh, the parcels in question but I have traveled from uh, uh, along uh, Airport Boulevard, so uh, I'm familiar with the roadway anyway. Ask any, uh, does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none, let the, re uh, the record reflect that all members uh, are now uh, available to hear this case. Uh, would the individuals who are the party to this item please come to the podium? We'll ask you to state your name and address for the record so you can be, and also you can be sworn in for the, uh, 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 t your testimony and uh, is Mr. Delaney or Mr. Baker with us today? Uh, good morning. My name is Garrett Baker with Delaney Property Group. All right. Good morning, Ms. Baker. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Could you face the clerk and uh, be sworn in? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Uh, and could you give us your uh, address for the purposes of the record? Uh, sure. 3262 Old Shell Road, Suite C1, Mobile, Alabama, 36607. Okay. Good morning. Uh, Have you read a copy of the staff's analysis of this, of your application? Yes. And you realize that all the criteria must be met in order uh, to receive a uh, conditional use? Yes. All right. At this point in time, if you would like, uh, you can make, uh, the board will be happy for you to make a introductory uh, uh, exposition of your case, or if you wish, uh, the staff would present their findings and then after that, uh, we would be glad to hear any remarks that you would make uh, concerning it okay um well i can tell you it's uh it's going to be some belt rentals we're asking for i'm sorry sir could you speak up just a little bit yes uh we're proposing a some belt rentals uh, at this location and we're asking for um outdoor storage i know by code i think all the outdoor storage needs to be covered so that is the variance we're requesting um and I do know we have to screen 
uh, the lot from all residential lots as well. So we're, we're willing to do that, no problem. Okay. And you also realize that no repair work of any sort on your equipment can be done uh, there, right? Yes. And uh, I presume you made arrangements to, yeah, with machinery, everything breaks down. For, uh, eventually, you uh, have made arrangements to have it repaired elsewhere, and the work would not be done on the lot. Is that right? Uh, yes, that should not be a problem. Okay. Board members, um, you've heard the, uh, the testimony. Are there any questions so far? Or we can now proceed to our staff and uh, uh, for the full presentation of their findings. Andrew, I think you're up. All right, sir. Once again, this conditional use case 2023-16. Uh, this is the location map, as you can see it. It's on the north side of airport in between, oh, that's okay. between the railroad tracks and Old Palafox. This is our zoning map showing the zoning on site as commercial. Future land use map showing it as mixed use urban. This is our CRA overlay map. It's within the Oakfield Community Redevelopment Area, but we do not have codified uh, criteria for that district. The aerial map of the site. The one of the public hearing signs posted on site. Uh, this is looking east down airport towards the railroad tracks. This is looking into the subject property. And this is looking west down Airport Boulevard. There were two signs placed on site, one at either end of the collection of parcels. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as to the findings, again, this is a uh, conditional use to allow outdoor storage. The conditions on that being that uh, outdoor storage in commercial um, does prohibit, as you had explained, uh, repair over <coughs> storage <coughs> activities, and that all such storage shall be screened from residential uses and maintained to avoid nuisance conditions. To the first criterion, uh, general compatibility. The parcels are located along Airport Boulevard and are adjacent to commercial and heavy commercial light industrial zone properties that are currently vacant. Parcels to the south across Airport Boulevard are residential. Parcels to the southwest and west of the subject property contain various car dealerships and automotive repair shops. The proposed use as requested can be conducted and operated in a manner that would be compatible with adjacent parcels. Criterion B, facilities and services. Facilities and services are available and will be provided as needed for the proposed use Connection to these services will be reviewed at the development review stage. On-site circulation based on the submitted site plan, ingress and egress will be from Airport Boulevard. Criterion D, nuisances and hazards. Applicant indicates that the time of operation will be during business hours. Avoidance of nuisances and hazards in the immediate area will be evaluated during the development review process. Criterion E, solid waste service must be provided as needed for the proposed use. Criterion F is dealing with screening and buffering. Comments from planning staff related to screening buff and buffering for the proposed development were provided to the applicant during the pre-application meeting. If the conditional use is approved, the applicant must meet the screening and buffering requirements of the Land Development Code. Uh, it would be at that point that I do mention to you that the screening and buffering comes in between uses when you have commercial adjacent to residential. Um, in this case, you have commercial and heavy commercial up against each other. Uh, criterion G, signs and lighting. 
Signs and lighting will be evaluated during development review and must be limited to what is allowed by the provisions of the LDC. Exterior lighting shall be deflected from the adjoining properties and public streets. Criterion H dealing with site characteristics. The eight and a half acre site appears adequate for the proposed use that includes a new building, parking, and an equipment yard. Conceptual site plan shows wetlands and at least one heritage tree that will be undisturbed. Use requirements. Um, again, these are the requirements specific to this conditional use and as stated before, no repair, overhaul, or salvage activities are allowed and the storage must be screened from residential uses and maintained to avoid nuisance conditions. As to the findings, staff recommends approval of the proposed use as requested with the condition that pending with the condition of pending completion of the DRC process and receipt of a development order. And that concludes staff's findings. Thank you. Uh, board members, do you have any questions? I have a question about the CRA. Um, mm -hmm. Was the CRA department did they review this at all? Did they have any comment whatsoever? I know there's so, no criteria. <coughs> <coughs> so um, they are part of the development review process. For the ones, for the CRA areas that do have codified standards, yes, we, we asked them for comment on those regarding those standards. This one, uh, we have nothing, no standards to go by that would change anything other than <laughs> what is allowed by the zoning. You have a couple of, um, looks like a site layout and a boundary. Can we see that on the mm -hmm. screen? And looks like there's wetlands to the northwest. Is that right? Of the site? It's, it's essentially, it's, it's kind of at an angle, but yes. And I guess that, um, that gravel area is a parking area. Is that, is that <laughs> gravel or cement or? Do we know what that is? Yes, it appears to be gravel on the plan. Um, and again, the, the the final sizing of that is going to depend upon a stormwater review or engineering. Uh, there is a coefficient applied to gravel as a surface as opposed to asphalt or concrete because it is somewhat impervious. Uh, but also allows for some drainage. So that's gonna, that's all gonna be factored in in development review and the, the accommodations that come through that process. And Airport Road, it looks like there's, is there three entrances on Airport Road? So there are currently uh, at least three curb cuts on there mm -hmm. uh, that were part of the previous properties. They all had their own access. As shown on the site plan, the access for this site would be on that westernmost piece. Is Airport Road a state road or a county? Remember offhand, but uh, give me one second here. <laughs> I think it is, but I want to make sure. Uh, it appears to be state. 
as a minor arterial. Um, my only other question. This, this hasn't gone before DRC yet, right? Just the pre-app stage. Um, my only question was um, the extent of that wetland, um, what it looks like off, off the map. Uh, is it a bigger connection to a bigger wetland or if so, we have gravel parking and we have a wetland that's next to it, are we talking about? So it's, it's an isolated wetland that uh, continues to the properties to the north and that's going to have to be buffered per the code. Uh, 25 foot average buffer all the way around that. It's, yeah, in that area there. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? I have one, Andrew. Yes, sir. No one else on the board does. It seems to me that on the side of the uh, street that the project is planned, uh, it appears to be commercial and heavy, uh, commercial, am I right? Yes, sir. Now, on the other side of the street, and this is where I'd like for you to help me, uh, where are the homes uh, uh, the residences that uh, are included uh, within this perimeter. Can you show me that? Sure. Uh, it might be better to go with the, uh, the aerial map. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... Hold on, you can do it. I was going to say, so... Directly across in that area there, you, you do have residences. There's a couple businesses on either end. Um, and even though it is zoned commercial, that, that is allowed use um, with, within commercial. Um, being as this is a minor arterial road, quite often you will find that situation where we had, when zoning came in, there are already residential uses along that road. Um, but the commercial designation is appropriate given the roadway. Okay, and so we do have some homes uh, that uh, would be on the other side of the street. Is that uh, that is it? that is correct? And from zoning standpoint, um, right of way severs adjacency. So anytime we talk about buffering from adjacent uses and districts, um, the concept of it being adjacent is, is severed by the right of way. It's sort of like when we have um, requests that come to you regarding drive through restaurants that have to be separated by a right of way right. or a certain distance from uh, residential zoning. Okay. Uh that was my concern. We don't want to create or allow a potential nuisance condition that, you know, uh, where you have homeowners that are backed up against uh, a commercial business, and we know the tension that that often creates. Uh, but since they are across the street, then it would it appears to me that was my one concern when I read this, uh, <clears throat> that uh, we do have some homes, but I do think, given that they are on the other side of the street and there will be buffering, that I believe that the uh, problem will be uh, 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 contained or, or, or reduced or however you want, want to phrase it. Any more questions?
I have a question for the applicant. What kind of equipment or material um, will be stored here? If you don't mind, Scott Delaney is an agent, but I'd like to swear him in before he gives testimony. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. State your name and address, please. Scott Delaney, 3262 Old Shell Road, Mobile, Alabama, 36607. Um, okay, sorry. So... Uh, <laughs> The question is <laughs> what type of equipment will be uh, on site? Right. So um, the, the tenant will be a uh, equipment lease rental company. And so it is a variation of a number of different, uh, more of a light industrial type equipment, you know, no major uh, large industrial stuff. I mean, there won't be any major cranes or anything like that. It's, it's more of just... Um, anywhere from trailers to uh, um, some of the other equipment they, they rent a lot of. Um, it, I'm trying to draw in a blank here on the exact equipment, but any type of, um, huh? Construction yeah, just con general construction equipment, um, general commercial construction, no large industrial. Um, you know, they may have some stuff here and there, but just general commercial construction equipment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for Mr. Delaney while he is with us? No? No questions? You have a, I got. Oh, no oh okay. Our vice chairman? Uh, you have a building on site? Um, is that just like an office building or will that be a, how big is that building? So, yes, there, there will be a building on site with uh, bays and, um, It'll just be a, a general office and storage facility where they'll be um, <clears throat> utilizing. It's a building that's going to be right now. What we're showing is a ten thousand square foot building with um, with general bays and a office. These bays won't be. Uh, again, uh, used for any kind of repair work? Or no, no. Okay. It, any more questions? Thank you, sir. I appreciate your testimony. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we now come to the portion where the uh, we will take public comment, and uh, we have heard, of course, from... Mr. Uh, Delaney, who has just spoken with us, and also Mr. Baker. Uh, Jonathan Green, uh, if Mr. Green would like to speak, uh, or if you'd like to waive your time, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Mr. Green, I'll let the record show, waives his time. And we have Patricia, I'm going to, I know I'll miss this. Is it Horton or Hort Hartman? Hartman. Patrick. Patrick Hartman. Oh, okay. Well, I missed all around. Uh, would you like to speak, sir? All right. And last, we have Michael McRae. Good morning, Mr. McCray. Morning. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I'll be God. Yes, I do. Thank you. Please state your name and address, please. My name is Michael McRae. I live at 2296 um, Wallace Lake Road in Pace, Florida, uh, 32571. On the application, I put business address uh, for 6120 Enterprise Drive. Um, I come without any objections, but I just wanted to go on record. Our concern was addressed by the board in terms of questions regarding the environmental or the wetlands area. Um, I represent a company that, that uh, owns the adjacent property, which is not um, separated by a right-of-way. 
and uh, our concern was the construction. We've learned a lot about it this morning in terms of how and what is going to go on the property, and our concern is the movement uh, of the wetlands area, but it seems to be addressed. Here, uh, Jay, uh, can you point out where, where your, your property is located? Uh, could you come over so we can get you recorded and uh, she's showing us yeah okay so you you have that larger <clears throat> parcel um, to the I north guess, to the north I guess that's correct of the okay and what is it what does that parcel do well we're under construction or development now for a future site for for the Lewis Bear Company okay it's not a residential it is not okay okay that that was my concern okay and you understand that to be a isolated wetland I'm, a, I'm assuming that wetland probably meanders across a line onto your property it does okay from east to west pretty much the whole parcel that's shown there okay okay all right all right sir do you have any other comments no sir okay Thank you, Thank you very much. We Thank appreciate you. your comment. Well, board, uh, the chair will now entertain a motion regarding the CU 2023-16. When with your motion, please state whether or not you adopt the staff's findings of fact as presented by the staff. If for any reason, you do not accept the findings. Please go through all the criteria and address each one specifically as why you do not concur with the staff's findings and provide substitute findings. We've had heard the evidence now. Uh, do we have a motion for discussion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the staff's findings of fact and grant the condition we. We have a motion by our Chairman Emeritus, Mr. Smith. Uh, I second that. And we have a second. Is there any further discussion <laughs> on this particular case? Seeing none, would everyone please <coughs> raise your right hand uh, if you are in favor of Mr. Smith's motion? Let the record reflect all members have voted in the affirmative and the uh, uh, proposal is uh, approved. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your coming. Our next case is CU 202401, 200 Molino Road, Molino Hills Road, conditional use approval to allow a borrow pit within a thousand feet of a residential use. Requested by W.R. Ward, agent for Cleveland Rufus Campbell, Senior trustee for the Cleveland Rufus Cam <coughs> Campbell's Trust <coughs> owner. <coughs> Has there been any ex parte communication regarding this case? No. Seeing none. Is there anyone with knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none, 
Uh, does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none. It says, will the individuals uh, who are a party to this item please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record so you can be sworn in by the clerk. W.R. Ward, 9909 North Cope Avenue, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Do you see this, <coughs> The testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be God. I do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Ward, um, were you given a copy of the criteria um, regarding the conditional use? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, and uh, you understand that all the criteria must be met in order for the board to grant such a conditional use? Yes. All righty. Um, would you like to... Uh, make a presentation on your case. This is a condi conditional use application as stated for an existing <coughs> borrow pit that we want to expand. It does fall within the thousand foot clearance criteria on two residential parcels. And that's the reason why we're here. This pit is surrounded by property owned by Mr. Campbell, who is a trustee for the Cleveland Campbell Trust. <laughs> this pit started out as a county borrow pit many years ago. It was just a 10 acre pit at that time. Mr. Campbell purchased that property and the adjacent property around it, and we've expanded since then, and now requesting another expansion. We need more dirt. Just everywhere we turn, there's more demand for dirt. I agree with staff's analysis of the system, and I defer to them for their presentation. I do have seven additional photos if anybody's interested in seeing them, the areas of the pit and the surrounding area. But I will defer to staff at this time. Um, Mr. Campbell, I would suggest it's completely up to you and the board, but if you have anything that you want the board to see, you got to, if it's not part of the packet, you got to submit that as evidence so that the board can, because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding. So if you feel like they would be necessary, you can, you, can let, you can let the board make that decision now if you feel like it's necessary or you just want to just... Wait and see. Well, uh, I'm ready to move forward. Okay. If they, the photos are on the pen drive in the computer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, These photos are just to give you a, a more clear understanding of what the area looks like out there. Has um, staff reviewed these photos? I haven't seen them, no. Okay. Um, I guess this goes before a motion before the board, whether or not you want to allow these photos into evidence at this time, we kind of get an idea of, of what they are, uh, other photos of the, of the site in its current condition, I'm assuming? Very current condition. Very current condition. They were just taken two days ago. <coughs> Is there a <coughs> motion, any discussion on this? Uh, I believe we would need to see what we're considering first, and normally we do that. Yes. Uh, Ms. Rachel's pulling them up so I can look at them, and I'll kind of give you a description. Uh, 
so these are photos um, that appear to be of the site, possibly taken with a drone. Uh, first two photos on there, though, are of a different location. A large lake uh, with a looks to be a dam on one side. Uh, but that's the other photos are of the pit, and I took a couple as well when I went out there. So I, I have no objection to these photos. Um, if we can get them on the... Oh, it's still loading. Sorry. Okay. Let's open them. Let's see them because, it, because the reason why, the reason why I'm suggesting that, because if this, if this board, yet if this board approve of this condition of use, it still got to proceed to the next level, which is the Board of County Commissioners. And being that these are quasi-judicial proceedings, there may be some things that he may want to present at that forum concerning this case or whatever. So if you cannot, if it's not here, it can't do this, it cannot proceed to the next level. But because this still got to be, the permit itself got to be blessed by the Board of County Commissioners, everything that need to be basically so, voted on so it can move forward. So if we need a motion, we need a motion to accept these photos. And yeah. evidence. Yes. I, I, um, if the so desire, just yes. in case. Well, I move that we accept these photos into evidence on Mr. Homer's um, word that they are relevant. Second, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Andrew, um, you've looked at these. What what are they? So, as, as I said, the they're still processing here. Uh, the first two appear to be of a, a different location, but the other ones are of this pit site. Okay. Showing, and, showing the entrance and then uh, a view looking out over it. I'm not sure what, if the first two aren't of the site, that they're relevant. I, I, would, I think those are in there by mistake. Can I explain that, sir? Yes, sir. The first two are really the last two that I want to present. They show reclamation of a borrow pit that we have completed adjacent, not adjacent to, but within a mile of this site. They're presented to address the issue of reclamation and what this borrow pit is planned to look like when it's completed. Uh, I appreciate that, but w at least for me, what we're here today to do, to talk about and to decide is what is on the ground right now and how it uh, affects uh, residential property I understand that you know that that is your goal and that sort of thing but that's in the distant future I just uh, the others seem to be very relevant to what we're talking about but I can't uh, I can't support uh, the introduction of of potential plans uh, which may or may not occur. Uh, I just think it muddies up what we're here to do today. I, I, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree because one of my concerns, yes. and I, I guess um, yes. I don't know if they do this during the <coughs> process, but one of my concerns in reading this is what ha happens what what happened to the original pit is it still being dug is it um, being reclaimed how is it being reclaimed and what is the future outcome of this pit once it's over once it's it's uh, served its purpose if you will and a lot of borrow pits um I think that's that's an integral part of the beginning is that they're you know the owner is is um, committed 
to to the end process and not just leaving a big hole in the earth you know um, be it filling it in with with debris or making it a pond or, or what have you and what has been done uh, to reclaim that pit I think that's um, an integral part of of allowing this to go forward because if they didn't do a a good job on the first pit what makes them what makes me think that they're going to do a, a good job on the second and if i may miss bass um if i may chip chairman um i am not the borrow pit or the pit guru however drew and myself <coughs> in 2014 we we became decent enough experts on this when the and when the board of county commissioners they made some drastic changes regarding borrow pit and reclamation and what can be done. So, Ms. Bass, your point is very, very relevant at this time. Again, all of that still will have to be reviewed in the future. They still have to come and come back before the Board of County Commissioners for any type of regular, for any type of reclamation activities in the future. However, on many occasions, I have seen with my since 2014, in my experience, <coughs> is a question that definitely comes up at the Board of County Commissioners. What is going to be like? What is going to, if it's going to be any type of adverse type of uses? So, 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 so either way, Mr. Godwin is correct, you are correct, but it's up to the which of the board. But I do know that question, uh, especially when it comes to reclamation, even at the early stage at this point, on what is going to be reclaim with and there's another process for reclamation. It still have to go before the port. But, but right now this it just asking for an expansion of the digging out dirt. Digging out dirt. But like you still you made a very valid point again. The nobody is want just to hold just sitting in the ground. So at early stage that that is a discussion that question will come up even in the even in the early stages at this point. <clears throat> we didn't vote on accepting them. I made a motion to accept Yeah, you made them. a motion. We had a second. We had some discussion of omitting. The first two. The first two. Um, do you want to amend your motion to exclude the first two, or is your motion as it stands? I, I'm going to keep my motion as it stands. I don't know that they're relevant in the in the in the case, you know, because the case is not about that, but um, I don't have a problem with them being there. So, so right. my motion as it stands. Any further discussion? If, if I may, not to confuse things, but to try to help out. Okay. So, here at the BOA, uh, what you're considering is the land use, yes or no, to the use of the land. Any reclamation plan has to be approved through the BCC. So uh, it's something to keep in the back of your mind, but you aren't the board that is approving the reclamation plan. Correct. And, uh, and just my feeling is, uh, is, is that this is uh, the, the hope, the goal, the wish uh, for the future but that's not what we're here today for. What we're here today is to decide that issue. And uh, that's sort of, the idea of the reclamation is not connected in any way to what we're here to decide. Uh, and I just, I guess it's the lawyer in me, but it just doesn't seem uh, that to me photos of, it's kind of like uh, if you have a rendering, you know, this is what we're going to do when it's all uh, done. Well, we're not there yet, and what, where we are is the question before us, and it doesn't involve uh, reclamation. It involves the question 
of uh, expansion. And I think it's excellent that we have aerials. I, when I looked at this file last night again, I was kind of looking for something like that. Uh, and so, I have no problem with those. I just think the other two so are will, just aren't. I will modify my, my motion to exclude the two photos that are not relevant to the property as it stands today. And I accept that. I agree. Mr. Ward, did you have something to say? I just said I agree with deleting the first two. Yeah. Yeah. No. You're okay with deleting? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. We're amending um, <coughs> to accept all but the first two uh, photographs into evidence. Um, all, in favor. all in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, six, we have uh, all in favor, um, no opposed. I guess let's, uh, don't look at the first two pictures. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, number 29, this first one. This one just gives you an overview overall view of the pit as it exists currently. As you can see it's grown to more than the original 10 acres that the county started. But if you look at the, the photo there, you're looking to the west. This is shot from the eastern portion of the property. What you'll see, of course, is the dirt excavation, but you'll also see the dredge pumping white sand. The white sand that we pump is, uh, is in great demand. We will continue dredging that <coughs> and what we'll wind up with is a huge lake. How deep will it be? The the dredge typically will pump to 25 to 30 feet deep, okay. depending on the clay layers down below. If we encounter stiff clay, of course, we can't, we can't go beyond that. But uh, typically about, about 25, 30 feet deep. We have to slope the sides in the reclamation process to meet all the criteria of the LDC. The property that you see surrounding it is all owned by Mr. Campbell over here. The dirt trails that you see, the drive trails coming through here, there's a fence along that road on the lower portion. That is cow pasture, okay? This is also a ranch. I'm not sure. How many head of cattle we currently have? Last count I had was about 62. <laughs> about 62 head of cow, cattle, and some horses, and a donkey or two. <laughs> but Mr. Campbell is very particular about his property. There is several home sites that are being retained around this future lake for family members. To the left up there is Mr. Campbell's house. He has a beautiful house up there on the hill overlooking this pit. Back behind the pit, along that Gulf Power transmission line easement back there, Jerry Campbell recently built his house overlooking the pit. This is Contrary to people saying they don't want to live, don't want to live next to a dirt pit. Uh, these are currently some very beautiful sites, and in the future they will be even more beautiful. Okay, that's the pit. One of the problems is the northwest corner of the pit, uh, number zero nine.
This at the northwest corner of the pit. The paved road you see in the background is Barth Road. Not, not North Barth Road, just Barth Road. The structure that you see <coughs> there adjacent to Barth Road is one of the issues that we're too close to. I did not get back off far enough to get the fence line of the pit. The existing fence of the pit is back below the photo there. The vegetation that you see there is a 200-foot buffer that we're leaving in place. That, will, that buffer will, will not be removed. It's fairly thick vegetation. Also, the house that you see down below down there is 15 feet in elevation below the ground level at this buffer line. The residents of that house cannot see the pit. Now, the, the next problem corner is the northeast corner, number 28. This shot is just across from where the previous shot of the overall pit was taken. The corner that you see there where the, where the trees are, that property is owned by uh, the, the SAP family, S-A-P-P. The pit will come up to that corner within the requirements met by LDC. And <coughs> if necessary, we will put a buffer, a physical buffer along the screening, for screening there along that. But in that corner up there where the trees are, there is a house, and that's the house in concern. You cannot see it because the vegetation is so thick. But the, it is within the thousand foot, so it is, it is the call for conditional use. 24. This item here you'll never see on another barrel pit. It may be a little difficult to see, but that is a cattle gap. Mm -hmm. Because we do have cows out there roaming, it is necessary to keep them out of the pit itself. We have at least uh, two of these on site. Again, this is intended to show you that since Mr. Campbell owns all the adjacent property, with the exception of the SAP property, he is very concerned about the care <coughs> of his property. 27. It's difficult to see that this, again, it's the same area. If you look up there adjacent to the dirt trail, that is some of the cattle. And that's adjacent to the pit. All this area is fenced off, of course. Secure farm fencing. It's not your typical farm fencing. Six foot high, heavy grade fencing. The other two were on the uh, other pit, so they don't count. But I presented those just to try to give you a feel of what we're doing out there. The fact that we're not out there just digging up the land and leaving holes out there. This pit will de develop into a lake. Uh, the ones that we have, the one to the northeast of here is a great fishing lake. The ones we have up in Sardine, up on I-65 in Alabama, and the gravel pits up there, we've reclaimed them. They're great fishing lakes as well. 
I'll defer to staff. I have, does anybody have a question for the applicant? One, one minute at this time. No? no? Not this time. Um, my only question, uh, the total uh, for this conditional use, the total acreage um, under this conditional use uh, is, uh, what, about 40, 43, 45? On this expansion? Yes, this expansion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. About 43 acres? Correct. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Um, staff, do you... Uh, would you like to make your presentation? Certainly. <clears throat> Once again, conditional use uh, 202401. This is our location map and also showing wetlands. As you can see, the wetlands along the uh, Scambia River are off to the east. This is a zoning map for the site. As you can see, the zoning is agriculture. The future land use for the site is rural community. <coughs> Here's an aerial map of the site of the parcels that have been brought in for this. As you can see on this, um, there is the existing pit. Um, as Mr. Ward stated, it was a county pit. I believe it was in 2000, pr prior to my tenure with the county, uh, a conditional use for the original pit portion. In 2012, we did, uh, staff did bring to you an, ex an expansion to its current size uh, as a conditional use. So also on here, you can see um, the main entrance is down in the southwest corner of the uh, map. The parcels do, one, one parcel does have a little finger that reaches all the way up to Barth Road. Um, it, there's like woods up there, uh, possibly a little trail through there. That is not going to be an entrance or exit for this mining operation. And the woods that you see rimming the northern portion of the pit, those are to remain. This is the public hearing sign I posted at the entrance to the, the pit coming off 29. So given the, the scale of the excavation. Uh, I just tried to get more along a parent, uh, panoramic view. Um, this is looking east, more easterly into the existing area and the area of expansion. And this is looking more northerly. This is along that um, western edge of the pit. The the FPL power line easement is just behind those trees there. As to the findings, um, as explained, it's a conditional use uh, if you're you're wanting to do a pit within a thousand feet of residential uses. So, with the criteria for the first criteria, um, and this is doing with general compatibility. The parcels are in a rural timbered area east of Highway 29, south of Barth Road, and north of Molino Hills Road, and are part of an established mining operation. Criterion B, facilities and services. Facilities and services are available and will be provided as needed for the proposed use. The connection to these services will be reviewed at the development review stage. On-site circulation, ingress and egress will be from internal drives connecting to Molino Hills Road leading to Highway 29. Nuisances and hazards. Upkin indicates that the time of operation will be during business hours. Uh, avoidance of nuisances and hazards in the immediate area and, and when it comes to a mining operation, um, what's the two things that are commonly associated <laughs> is you, you'll have dust and you'll hear the clanging of the uh, dump trucks. Um, avoidance of nuisances and hazards in the media area will be evaluated during development review and are, will be mitigated due to the distance and natural vegetation between the use and the residences. As far as solid waste, solid waste service must be provided as needed for the proposed use. Screening and buffering. 
applicant must meet specific screening and buffering requirements of the LDC for borrow pits. The undisturbed areas of the parcels are to remain wooded as additional buffering. Signs and lighting. Signs and lighting will be evaluated during DRC and must be limited to what is allowed by provisions of the LDC. Exterior lighting must be deflected from adjoining properties and public streets. Um, generally, there's not a lot of lighting that would be associated with a mining operation. Um, <clears throat> site characteristics. The location appears adequate for the scale of the proposed use and the specific county requirements for this type of operation. Specific use requirements. And what I've done in here is I added LDC section 4-7.6 B through F. These are the standards uh, regulating conditional use as a borrow pit. And these go through explaining access, um, how to deal with nuisances, um, what is required to be provided. And mind you, this is we're still at the land use stage. This is not the reclamation stage. Uh, minimum parcel size is 20 acres. Um, so this approval, a land use approval for conditional use does not waive applicants do, duty to meet any other county, state, or federal permitting requirements or performance standards. Um, within our code of ordinances, which is out, outside the purview of the LDC, there are additional standards regarding pit operations and that will be reviewed through DRC. Uh, the last one is kind of explaining why we're here. It says notwithstanding uses listed for any zoning district, conditional use approval process shall be waived for any borrow pit or reclamation activity that is located a thousand feet on all sides from any residential use or zoning district and is serviced by an adjacent arterial, arterial or collector road. And as Mr. Ward stated, we do have two residences that fall within that thousand foot measurement. As the finding, staff recommends approval of the proposed use as requested with the condition of pending completion of the DRC process and receipt of a development order. And that concludes staff's findings. Thank you. Does the board have any questions of the staff at this time? I got, I got, I got something. Um, could you, you stated that on that finger mm -hmm. of a bark road that there will be no ingress and egress on that. I think that's, I think that I is, heard that correctly. That is correct. That is not proposed. And as I said, the wooded barrier uh, is to remain. Mr. Ward, do you have any questions of the staff at this time before we talk to the speakers? No questions. No questions at this time. Okay, I, I believe we do have uh, some speakers. All right, Mr. Ward, we have your, um, Mr. Campbell, would you like to, to speak? If you would, direct your attention to the clerk and she will swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be God? Thank you. Please state your name and address, please. Cleveland R. Campbell, Sr. My wife picks up the mail. I can't even really tell you my address out there, so <laughs> we just got a new name. It's the post office box that we'll get our mail, so <clears throat> is that okay? <laughs> we just got a new sign put up out there not long ago. I wanted to discuss uh, two or three of those photos that Bob presented. Mr. Kemp, if you can, can you speak in the mic because you're being yeah, recorded? Would, yes, sir. I would like to review two or three of those photos Mr. Ward presented so I can explain <clears throat> some things to you. Maybe okay. if you'd understand that better. All righty. I think we're getting the photos back up. If we just let her know which ones to pull up. The first one that he showed you, I believe. Let me see if that was it. Why well, I want to show it, there's some reclamation already done on there. 
I want to show that to you. And um, it's not easy to be digging and reclaiming at the same time. It's a step-by-step -step process, but we have done a considerable amount of that on this property right there. Also, I'd like to mention that we own the property that used to be the old brickyard back from the early 1900s. I think there's six pits on there. Never was reclaimed. It's pretty unique down in there if you, if you saw it. One of those pits, we did get a permit from the county to fill back in debris, a lot of debris. And we've been filling that back in and reclaiming that because yes. that'll be some more pasture land for us. But I wanted to bring that about. And we have these lakes that you saw on the photo. There's feeders, fish feeders in there. We have fish where that dredge is. Another little lake there, it's fish feeders, catfish in it. And I, <clears throat> my plans is in that area where the dredge operation in the pit is, to have three different lakes in, in there. And that would be um, the one we have now, the brim and bass, one in a larger one for the catfish, and another lake for uh, uh, column perch, or what do you want, the column, and uh, a lake just for that within that area when it's a little larger dug out. So <clears throat> we have another four lakes on the properties. That property's up there has got several little spring heads on it. Um, we put our pastures in an accordance that regardless where the cows are on that property, if they shut off from here or there, they can go to water. Things like that that we do. We probably have in our properties in there close to probably close to three miles of hiking trails, four-wheel trails, or whatever you want to use, or riding a horse or whatever. And uh, so we, we're making that like a, a country getaway place, what we're doing for the future. It's not letting me um, open the pictures right now, but I do have uh, the aerial map pulled up. Okay, let me. Uh, Mr. Campbell, she, you, you stand, stand on my chicken and point to it. Let me get, she'll let you know. She can okay. it. <clears throat> I'm not used to standing up for a lot of people like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you see the lake on the south side of that lake where that road is. That's been reclaimed, and we bush hogged that on that slope, uh, if you understand. Then right, right where it offsets and comes around, that's reclaimed, we bush hogged that. And um, wh where he showed you the cattle gaps, that is pasture up there. Now towards the power line to the west, we don't, <clears throat> that is fenced up where the red line goes up and comes back down. And that right on the other side of the red line going out towards Barth Road, that was a road that the county used when they had their old pit. The accident, <coughs> when they went through somebody else's property, they didn't own that up there. Their property was down there where the pit is, that part of that. And that, they didn't own that much land, but they owned part in there. And, uh, where we have it fenced, we do have, we do not have an intention to dig all the way up to the red line. And the reason, one of the reasons, that hill gets higher and higher, and it creates a more of a problem of washing. If you got a 40 foot bank, that's a lot of different than a 20 foot bank. So what we uh, plan to do is tear down. And one reason times pass, we have got a permit from the county to dump lot debris. The lot debris <coughs> from those slopes actually holds better than just dirt, 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 because 
rain can wash it so easy with loose dirt. So on the other part, we filled in. We held good soil on, to put on top of that so we could grow grass and pasture. And that's the process we've been doing for some time. And But we plan on staying at least 100 feet inside that red line towards your power line just because of any problems of reclamation or erosion in the future, that way we can control it when we finish it. Because there would be a lake up in that area. That lake would be about half again the size it is than the small one up and down that way for the catfish. So we have it planned when we get through the reclamation but also for the controls of any washes because if you got properties you know much about it you're going to maintain it if you got cows and things you're going to have trails and washes so we familiar with that we prepare for that and those cows will be able to be around those lakes I try to use every acre possible for grass and uh, that's that's our future plans all the way back over and <clears throat> where the gentleman lives back in the woods there um, we own east of there that was the old Mr. Hicks's properties in those lakes we own that and uh, we don't we're not planning on doing anything that we built one dam back with that hurricane a few years ago blowed out some of those big lakes and we got permitted Got one fixed. Working with the county to get the next one fixed because it done damage on Brickyard Road where it went on the road. That's a natural drain. So we in the process of that. So that's what, what we're doing out there. And I, I hope that we're good neighbors to everybody. Um, our traffic out there, we not a large, huge bar pit. Uh, since we've been there across the road, a big construction company has got a permit, got a bar pit, a house right across the road from their bar pit uh, on the west side of 29. Uh, they got, a, you know, they use a lot of material. They got several hundred acres in there, and uh, they do a good job with theirs, I think. And then on up that more road, there was another pit put in uh, about 500 foot from three houses, and uh, that was put in. Those people back in there. Going away from the houses, they do a great job. So this is not something unusual that the county hadn't permitted before. Uh, being a thousand feet or twelve hundred, both of those pits are closer to houses than that. So we're not asking for something that's never been done before. And uh, I like I have a house in there, uh, right at the north end of that red line over in that corner. That's my nephew's house, and he lived, that house was built this last year. So this, uh, right when you turn into the lake, that, where the lake is, the end of the pit, that is about two or three acres I reserved there for home site. Uh, and it's because of the view when it gets through looking down that one, the real estate and the property and the lakes. So we have a plan and I know you've heard this a lot of times from people that we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We've been doing this. It's not something that, you know, a bird in the bush, so to speak. We've already reclaimed some. We do it as we go as soon as possible. And uh, that's, I want to bring that, you know, this is our livelihood. But when we get through, a bar pit can be a liability. It can be an asset. And by having lakes, lake pastures back out of it, we make an asset. And that's why I'm stating, and we appreciate your consideration. Any questions from me? Does, any, does anyone on the board have a question of Mr. Campbell? <clears throat> does the staff have any questions of Mr. Campbell? No, I do not. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can I make one quick statement? Sure. FDEP has already permitted this area. We have a 10-year permit renewal 
of this area, including the expanded area. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss uh, Sandra Owens, if you'd like to come up. And if you would address the clerk. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Thank you. State your name and address, please. Sandra Owens, 7801 Irving Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Um, I am a current property owner on Barth Road, um, and I wanted to say that we had a lot of concerns when we first got this information, uh, a lot of unknowns. So today, some of those, a lot of those concerns have been satisfied. Uh, we were concerned about having <coughs> uh, the, the extension, how it would affect the property lines out there. And uh, right now, I think that it looks like it's going to be okay. And, uh, and then also the ingress and the egress, that information was something that we were concerned about also. And so, um, think, and also, we weren't even aware that there was uh, what type of dumping there was or, or, or excavations or whatever uh, things were going on in the pit. So now that I understand it is that it's uh, related to dirt and not something that's hazardous, that, you know, kind of gives me some relief to my concerns. So at this time, um, I withdraw my ob objections and uh, we will continue to uh, monitor the process and make sure that everything stays in order. And uh, we appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Does, uh, one minute, ma'am. One minute, ma'am. Hold on, just one minute. Does the board have any questions of Ms. Owens? Does the staff have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank oh, you. I, may I add one more thing, you too? You may. Um, my family has been, uh, a part of Barth, uh, Florida for several hundred years. So this area is very important to us. And so we want to, we want to make sure that everything's done properly and that the, the citizens there, the residents are protected. And so we appreciate having this opportunity to, to speak with you today. Well, I'm, I'm glad they're, they've answered your questions. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, next is Gregory Lewis. Okay. Um, let the record show uh, Mr. Lewis has waived his time. Uh, Joseph Cooler. Hi. Come up and. Uh... Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be God? Yes. Thank you. State your name and address, please. Joseph Cooler, uh, 1159 Bark Lane. Okay. My concerns was as the hazardous uh, material that could be hauled if they change their mind in the near future as far as uh, making that area into a dump. So with the modest statement of permanent stay in there, fish ponds, family member houses there. With the right amount of funds and money, you can up move, change your mind, and make that area into a dump site. So, provided they have the right permits. And as for as the encroachment on Boff Road, if the approval for that land was passed, uh, how it would affect the community there. And from my experience, not saying that the landowner is going to do that, uh, the pit process go, pit hauling dirt, not a real factor. Then it changes to a dump site where they haul in houses material. Uh, it erodes the I guess the quality of the water by whatever material and we end up like an area that's uh, fair to say that's in most black neighborhoods where you got pollution, you got cancer, 
from allowing a pit to be near a residential area. So that was my major concern. And from what he just said that they are doing, and as far as being a resident there and continue to monitor, as far as his statement, as far as what the land is gonna be used for, uh, I'm just gonna modestly object because I have seen and know that anybody can change their mind and try to get permits to do other things. Uh, Horace, uh, if you'd like to. Yes. Thank address. you, Mr. Kohler. Thank you, thank you for coming. I'm glad, um, as, as I told you this morning, please come in here. And, 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 and this is the way the process is supposed to work, where the citizen is supposed to come and, 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 and hear from the applicant and, and basically try to get some, some, some questions answered. But Mr. Kohler, I can, I can assure you right now that yes, Yes, things has happened in the past, but the Board of County Commissioner is adamant about any type of reclamation activities <clears throat> that is going to be adverse to the community. The Board will take drastic actions. There are rules the Board has adopted, rules in place that are in place right now that before any other type of dump or reclamation, it got to, before they start doing it, they got to come back before this board. And the board is, and these rules are in place. We made some, they made some drastic changes. Of course, anything can happen. But this board, with the rules that are in place, with all of the regulations that are in place, against some, some facilities, and they do, in other places, they have trying to CND and they adverse. But being that, being that we hear Mr. Campbell, all this on public record, before that happens, a substantial, and, I'm, and I know that I probably won't believe, but, want to live, but I've been doing this and I, and I know the rules that have been changed because of previous actions. That's why the board took a, a 330 degree turn about those concerns that have been happening in certain neighborhoods and certain areas and certain communities. So we hear your concerns, but I promise you, the rules are in place to prevent that from happening in this area and other communities as well. All right, thank yes, you sir. for informing me. And like I said, just I'm monitoring the situation. I'm pleased to. And uh, to then anything like that to matter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, but on another issue, as far as the lack of funding in that area, that is another issue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, that's not that's not this board purview under them. I mean, you can you can continue to take that up to, you can talk to me after, and I can tell you or give you a point and number. But that's not under the purview of this board at this right. point. Yes, sir. Right. But Thank I you. give you my card. You can always call me. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. No problem. Does the board have any questions of the speaker? And does staff have any questions? No, ma'am. Um, yes, I, I too um, was concerned uh, along with Mr. Cooler, and I appreciate Mr. Campbell uh, giving us um, kind of an overview of his stewardship of, of the land as it has progressed. Um, I, to me, obviously there's no guarantees, but um, you can kind of tell, um, I guess the consciousness of a um, landowner or business owner as to how they conduct himself um, from, from the past, um, uh, kind of gives you a good idea of, of how he's going to move forward. Okay, moving on to uh, the last person, Jacob Lett. Is he no longer here? Okay. All right, that is all the blue forms that I have as far as speakers for this um, case. Is there anybody else that has not filled out a blue form that would like to speak? Uh, and I want to say for the board, again, if the board do, if this department, if the board do grant conditional use approval, there is a site plan, very, very tedious site plan review process, as Drew stated. 
dealing with other codes and regulations that got to be in place. And after that, there is a BCC public meeting that the board must authorize a permit for resource extraction. And all of those things are governed as well. So, so, so there's, there's a continual process, but the end result, <laughs> if the board do wish, to, before they begin resource extraction in this area, the BCC yet has to approve it. That's the Board of County Commissioners meeting. And, 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 and Mr. Campbell, basically as of today's date, he's in compliance with the county regulation because he had to come and get permits and, and those things have been, he had been doing those things and meeting those standards. And Horace, um, that BCC meeting, that that is a meeting that um, that anybody can attend and ask questions. Yes, they can. Um, they can even ask me before. It's going to be notification will be sent out. Okay. I believe it's 2,500 feet radius for postcards. They'll be receiving postcards again for that meeting when it's scheduled at that point. Yes. So things like reclamation, um, any uh, concerns about that could be addressed. Yes, there they can state it at that meeting. Okay, does uh, would the staff like to make any closing statements? <clears throat> uh, no, ma'am. Uh, we stand on our findings and the evidence as presented. Mr. Ward, would you like to make any final statements? I think the I think the board's time, and I just just simply request approval of this this application that we've submitted. Thank you. All right, the board would like to entertain a motion regarding item CU-2023-16. I'm sorry, that is not right. CU-202401. Um, with your motion, please state whether or not you adopt the staff's findings of fact as presented by staff. If for any reason you do not accept staff's Findings, please go through all the criteria and address each one specifically as to why you do not concur with staff's findings and provide substitute findings. Madam Chair, I move that we support, uh, that we accept staff's findings of fact and approve the condition of use for CU 2024-0. Uh, do we have a second? Sorry. <laughs> I'll second. Do we have any discussion? I have one thing, uh, Andrew. When you reviewed this, uh, as I understood the testimony that was presented today, the there will be substantial buffers left in place uh, around or shielding the subject homes. Is is that correct? The, the homes off of Barth Road to the north. Um, <coughs> the homes of the property owners that are part of this operation uh, don't necessarily have the same buffering. Uh, as, as Mr. Campbell was explaining about, you know, they've got room for cattle to roam through there. So it's not the dense woods that there is from the homes on Barth Road. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about third-party homes, not okay. the family. Yes, sir. The, the third-party uh, homes, that, that will remain. That's so it home. is your considered opinion, then, that there will be substantial buffering natural vegetation and such uh, that will shield these uh, non-family homes. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay. And that is required by the ordinance, Mr. Mr. Godwin. That is required by the ordinance. That's what I'm saying, that this is just the first layer that is required. The rules are in place for the protect adjacent property owners and shell and Mr. Mr. Campbell. Basically, even, even if we need more, stop, need more, he always been willing to, to work with the county on those issues. Well, that's always the concern in these cases, and I know the, as I understand the county policy, this seems to be sort of a good example of placing these kinds of operations away from 
uh, homes, uh, which homes in borrow pits, as we've had a sad history in this county, don't get along very well. And uh, this seems to be a good example of how to avoid those kind of things. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, we are unanimous. Um, motion passes um, by a vote of six. And we're ready for case number CU 2024-02. Uh, 10605 Sorrento Road, conditional use approval to allow outdoor sales not among the permitted uses. Requested by Meredith Bush, agent for G for JGJ Capital Group LLC, the owner. Has uh, the uh, is there any ex parte communication regarding this case? Seeing none. Uh, does anybody have knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other source? Seeing none. Um, does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none. Uh, Ms. Bush, uh, would you like to present your case. I know that you're an attorney, so I guess we don't have to do the swearing in thing. So you have the floor. Uh, good morning. Thank you for your time. I'll be very brief. So this is on behalf of Warrior Beer Company Brew Pub. Um, it's a brewery out on Sorrento Road with a mission to assist veterans and give veterans and others a safe space to have life-changing conversations. Um, what we're really here for today is we're requesting um, the ability to serve and sell alcohol outdoors, to add picnic tables under a pavilion, which you'll see pictures of. They also want to add a small platform stage for speakers or, you know, somebody to come out with a guitar or something like that, and an outdoor uh, sand volleyball court, so to add outdoor recreation. Um, would you like me to go through the criteria at this time, or do you want I mean, we agree with staff's findings, staff is in support. We can um, have the staff do it, and if you want, I know you have presented um, a report yourself. If you want to, after the staff um, does their presentation, if you want to come back and um, add um, stuff from your report, um, that's fine. I'll that's fine. Staff. Okay, staff. Uh -huh. <coughs> yes, ma'am. This is conditional use case 2024-02. This is our location map and it is also including the wetlands. This is the zoning map showing the zoning on site as commercial. This is a future land use map showing the uh, future land uses mixed use urban. That little remnant piece of uh, red that you see on there that is touching this parcel and on to the adjacent one is a Scrivener's error in the mapping. <coughs> this, is, um, this is our aerial map of the site. Now on this, um, <clears throat> I want to point out the, the property due south of this is uh, owned by the school board. In between there, you have that thick swamp um, that when this, uh, this operation came in for their alcohol license, it, the way our, our code currently reads, it's uh, for the measurement would be from the front door to the nearest point of the school grounds in active use. Um, our director made a, an interpretation it, the nearest point would be where you can actually access the school, which is off to the west, and it made the measurement. If you were to measure from the front door basically to their rear property line, yeah, they, it abuts it. 
but the swamp in between kind of removed that uh, that idea of it being an active part of the school grounds. We certainly wouldn't want any activities of the uh, the school out in that swamp. Next, this is the public hearing sign I posted on site. That's looking southwest down Sorrento. Looking northeast uh, down Sorrento, that is towards the intersection with Blue Angel where you have Walmart, Target, Aldi, uh, and some restaurants. This is looking into the subject property. Behind those structures that you see <coughs> is the, uh, the swamp between this and the school. And this is a shot I took from the elementary um, on what I believe is the bus ramp uh, at the front of the school. And mm -hmm. as you can see, um, the operation that we're talking about is on the other side of those wood, that heavily wooded swamp area. All right, as to the findings. <clears throat> so within commercial zoning, um, we have under conditional uses, essentially a, a catch-all for outdoor sales not among the permitted uses. Um, and, and what has been proposed by the applicant, um, this is the closest fit. It's, it would involve sales that are not among those permitted uses of the district. Commercial wouldn't allow that an outdoor component to uh, <coughs> the, the current operation. So as to the, the criteria for general compatibility, the site is located along Sorrento Road, a principal arterial roadway, and is part of a commercial zoning node located at the intersection of Sorrento and Blue Angel Parkway. The nearest non-commercial use is an elementary school to the south, and these uses are separated by a swamp containing a tributary of Bayou Grande. The proposed use would be compatible with the surrounding area. Criterion B, regarding facilities and services. Facilities and services are available and will be provided as needed for the proposed use. The connection to these services will be reviewed at development review stage. On-site circulation. Uh, based on the submitted site plan, ingress and egress will be via an existing connection to Sorrento Road. Nuisances and hazards. Any nuisances opposed associated with the pro proposed, proposed use will be alleviated by the buffering of the adjacent wetlands. Solid waste. Solid waste service must be provided as needed for the proposed use. Screening and buffering. If the conditional use is approved, the applicant must meet the screening and buffering requirements of the Land Development Code and supplemental buffering to the existing wetlands will be required. Signs and lighting. Signs and lighting will be evaluated during the development review process and will be limited to what is allowed by the provisions of the Land Development Code. Exterior lighting shall be deflected from adjoining properties and public streets. Site characteristics. The location appears adequate for the proposed use as proposed. Uh, use requirements. The LDC lists no specific requirements for this proposed use. And as to the findings, staff recommends approval of the proposed use as requested with the condition of pending completion of DRC process and receipt of a development order. And that concludes staff's findings. Okay. Does, yes. <laughs> I, I had a, uh, Andrew, I, when I read the staff's report, I didn't know uh, uh, what the outdoor sales were going to be, mm -hmm. the subject matter. Uh, and it was when I went to Mrs. Bush's <laughs> very detailed presentation that I found out exactly what was being proposed and I just think that it would have been helpful to know that we were talking about outdoor alcohol sales here in the staff's proposal, uh, for, uh, findings rather. Yeah, that's, as I said, this is, um, 
this use doesn't really fit. Um, you know, our code doesn't anticipate every use that could come about, um, which is why it's been approached as a conditional use under this this kind of catch-all for outdoor sales um, that it could cover pretty much anything they needed to do, yeah, or wished to do. Well, like I said, I just think that that would have been helpful to have known that. I mean, right. it's not Christmas trees and it's not a market. It's a fruit and vegetables, and it's not two by fours. We're talking about alcoholic beverages, and that's always, I think, helpful to know the subject matter, but I appreciate your, as always, your hard work. And my concern was, and, I, and as I was reading this, there's outdoor sales versus off-premise sales. Correct. Okay. Two so, different things. Right. <clears throat> so this is not a liquor store in that you can buy alcohol, get in your car, and Correct. That that would be a, a completely different animal. So the um, license, the alcohol license, <coughs> it's done through the state, but there is a page for zoning sign off. Um, the, the license that's currently on this site um, isn't signed off for them to have the sales outside of the struck, outside of the building. Okay. On that form for the state, it it wants details on how much outside seating, that sort of thing is gonna be. Uh, if this conditional use is approved, they're gonna to have to alter that license to include that at outside section. But currently that's not on the license. Okay, this is a first helps. step to get that type this, of license. That we need, they would need to get this uh, land use approval to then get a license that would allow that. And if this is approved, this in no way allows them off-premise sales. Correct. The license that they're seeking is is modifying the license to allow them to out, the outdoor component to this. Right. Any other questions? Why don't we hear Ms. Yes. Ms. Bush? I, I have a question. Um, when I look at these cases, you know, my first thing is is you know why we're here. And sometimes I see that, that we're here for, you know, a distinction without a difference. And <clears throat> so if if they were selling alcohol in the building, they wouldn't have to come here, correct? Well, we currently are. Well, yes. Yeah, so right. there's no right. reason to, for it to be in front of this board. And so the, the question is outside sales. Correct. It's the outdoor component. Is the outdoor component. So to me, you know, unless there is a, a noise issue, a neighborhood issue, whatever, then that to me is a distinction. <coughs> and so that, that's my first look at all of these things. And this one, I had trouble really determining what the difference was. Um, and that, yeah. Yeah, this, like I said, this kind of falls into this, this weird sort of gray area between... Uh, yeah. What the state requires for yeah. one thing and what yeah. we do, and uh, we, we're trying to come up with the best fit. Because, like, it's zone commercial, so if they wanted an off-premise alcohol thing, they wouldn't have to come to us, correct? Well, so what we've been told, because it's zone commercial and all commercial activity has to be within the confines of a building, even if it were hamburgers, we would have to right. come get permission to have picnic tables under this pavilion okay. and serve the hamburgers. All right. So it, it's not because it's alcohol. It's right, because right. It's where it's, it's a pavilion whatever. and there's an argument that could be made that the pavilion is inside the confines of a building but rather than get into that fight with the county we just said we'd come for right. conditional use approval yes okay i will say that uh i didn't quite understand what we were talking about until i read your uh submission and i thought it was very detailed and uh i appreciated the information it certainly filled in uh, my my questions because um, you know alcoholic beverage sales are uh, something that is uh, are uh, sometimes problematic and and 
I appreciate you laying out what you intended to do. So if you'd like to. Ms. Bush, um, housekeeping item here. Um, I failed to do this when you came up here first. Uh, you did receive the staff's findings of fact. Correct. And you do understand <laughs> that all need to be met in order to grant the conditional use. Correct. Okay. Um, if you want to just scroll through pages seven, eight, nine, just to show this is the existing property and that's the pavilion where the picnic tables would go. That's the surrounding uh, fence. The property is fenced with a privacy fence. And again, as you saw, there's a, a huge buffer between <coughs> us and the adjoining properties. Um, that's the open area where um, the, I believe, where the volleyball court would, will be placed for summertime activities, people out enjoying uh, the facility. Um, yeah, I won't repeat our findings or the criteria because we are in agreement with staff um, that all criteria have been met, but we're certainly here as well as the owner to answer any questions. What is the hours of operation of this facility? <laughs> Eleven to ten Monday through Saturday, and eleven to eight on Sunday. Okay. Does the board have any questions of Miss uh, Bush? Does the staff have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, Gary Hefner, I believe you're the owner. Would you like to come up and? D. Solemn, you see where in a firm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God? Yes, I do. Thank you. My name is Gary Hefner. Um, I currently am partner in the JGJ. I'm the G part. I um, have two senior partners that are um, special ops pilots, uh, Joe and Joe. So um, I live at 8860 State Highway 180 in Gulf Shores. Um, <coughs> this is my current residence. <coughs> uh, first of all, thank you for, um, for hearing this opportunity for what we're trying to do as a conditional use. Um, my background is in construction and in development out of the D.C. area. But up in the D.C. area, I've started a foundation for veteran suicide, uh, which is the premise of this brewery, and uh, to further uh, the work there as a son of someone uh, that served in the Navy, took his life. Uh, this is my opportunity to continue to grow the awareness and have a conversation. Um, even though it's an alcoholic facility, a lot of times uh, just uh, one drink gives the opportunity for, for the condition of that opportunity to talk uh, where, where a vet's feeling. Um, so our space is not only going to be that, but it's also a space where we're hoping to provide opportunity for employment. Our first... Um, employee that we hired is actually a 24-year retired Navy, uh, eight-year FWC officer. Um, so the intent for us is more than just being a for-profit. Uh, with my background in being a nonprofit, the idea is that we're, we're going to be a facility that continues to grow in that social aspect. Um, so I just uh, I thank you for the opportunity to present what we're doing. Uh, as far as the outdoor sales, it's just a uh, the aspect of having an op opportunity to have in the one container, um, having a serving space that we can serve the alcohol outdoors to make it convenient for our indoor outdoor scenario so that uh, people that come in and want to have drink. And this is, this is not a bar, uh, a brew pub, and the understanding of what a brewery looks like is more of a, a family opportunity. That's why we have the big fields. That's why we want to have entertainment, volleyball, sand pits for the kids to come out and play. It's sort of, we, breweries are a little bit different um, than per se a bar that serves liquor and, uh, and, and so forth. Um, and that conditional area behind, that's, that swamp, that's over 20 plus acres that buffer um, our property to the school property. And that's never going to change. So thank you. Will you, and I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I understand that you're, um, um, you brew your own, own beers um, on this facility. Um, is there, 
will there be any food yeah. um, that is at this facility, or is it just strictly uh, beers and, and wines and so forth? No, it's so <coughs> currently just on the <coughs> on the exterior on that f fence line right there. It's set up that there be availability for two food trucks. Okay. Um, in our future uh, development, and this was sort of a, this was supposed to be stage two because stage one was put on hold based on um, having to get into the, the sewer and some tie-ins. Uh, but in our proposed first phase, there's actual space inside, all inside of our fence line. So everything takes activity inside the fence line that there's opportunity for us to put multiple food trucks um, and that'll be our source of, of food. Does the uh, board have any questions, Mr. Hefner? Does the staff have any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Ms. Bush, would you like to come and give your closing statement? Um, just very briefly, thank you for your time, and we'd ask that you approve having um, met the conditions. Staff, do you have anything further? No, ma'am. All right. One, one last thing, Andrew. Uh, presently, they are in compliance with the alcoholic beverage requirements, the codes for the state and the county. Is that right? For yes, for the county, they they meet the requirements uh, based on that interpretation of the code as is allowed. Okay. And uh, that area doesn't look like there. Aside from the school, there isn't any other real development around that particular area is there there is at, at that intersection off to the east um, it, the further you get away from that intersection you do run into more challenges for development uh, just simply due to the swamp area I mean there's there's vast tracts of wetlands in that area right <clears throat> thank you Okay, just to remind uh, the board that what we're looking at here is um, a conditional use approval to allow for outdoor sales, not among the permitted uses. Um, we'll now entertain a motion regarding item uh, CU 2024-02. With your motion, please state whether or not you adopt the staff's findings of facts as presented by staff. If for any reason you do not accept staff's findings, please go through all the criteria and address each one specifically as to why you do not concur with the staff's findings and provide substitute findings. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we accept staff's findings of fact and grant the conditional use for CU 2024-02. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All right. It uh, motion passes. Um, and I think we're on to the next case. Thank you. Case number CU 2024 zero three. 400 block Rodney Street and 421 Rodney Street, conditional use approval to allow miniature horses uh, requested by James and Christina Summers, uh, the owners. Uh, has there been any ex parte communications regarding this case? Uh, is there any knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Does anyone refrain, uh, will anyone re being refrained from voting <coughs> due to a conflict of interest? Seeing none, uh, will the individuals who are a party to the item please come to the podium? Is this Jim Summers? I am. Okay. Uh, would the clerk please swear you in? 
Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God? I do. Thank you. State your name and address, please. Jim Summers, 421 Rodney Street, 32534, Pensacola. Okay. Um, were you given um, a copy of the staff's findings of fact? I was. And you do understand that all criteria must be met in order for the board to grant I this do. conditional use? I do. Okay. Would you like to give your presentation at this time? Yeah, what we're looking to do is uh, just like the package says, we're looking to, uh, on t our two and a half acres, house and keep for pets a couple of, uh, you know, up to three animals per acre of the miniature horses. Uh, there's a picture of, for a size reference in the package there, you know, we've had dogs bigger than these things, you know what I mean? So, and also on our property, we have a, uh, on an official plat, there's a bridle trail that runs behind our property, right? Uh, the community's called the Ponderosa. We have an equestrian drive right there handy, you know, kind of has horses written all over it, kind of, right? But not the big ones. But these, these miniature horses, it's important to, to note that they're one-fifth the size of a, I call I refer to it as a real horse, a thousand-pound horse. These things might be 200 pounds soaking wet, right? So... The, with the existing codes and everything, you know, we, we don't want a big horse. I never did want a big horse, but we fell in love with these things years ago, and we're, we want to clear that one lot that we have on the acre over there, fence it in, and make it into a little pasture-type thing. And uh, It's going to be handled in the most mature manner that you can imagine. We, we're, uh, we respect the animals and our neighbors. I've talked to everybody around us, and they're all excited to say, oh, you know, we're the youngest people in the street and hey Jim's finally doing something over there you know <laughs> something new but uh, uh, that's basically what we're trying to do is three animals per acre and uh, have some new pets other than the dog you know so you plan on having what's it uh, I read somewhere uh, when I say there's three horses that I believe you plan on having there Three per acre. See, the way the code reads, the, the way the current animal ordinance reads is it's a number of animals per acre. And right. trying to stay in, you know, concert with that, I just phrased it as three animals per acre because they're a fifth the size of a real oh, okay. full-size horse, right? Okay. And I'm just trying to keep the, I don't know, for the right proper term to use here, but trying to stay in line with the way the existing ordinances are currently written. And, and this is strictly um, pets. your pets. pets? They will not be no. No bred pet. or used for? No, I, no. We're, get, we're either getting mares or geldings. I've dealt with teenage boys before, and I don't want any more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this is strictly pets, nothing commercial. Uh, you know, we're going to you know, walk them around the property, and, you know, just, just like you would a dog, you just put a little clip on there. I don't want to walk them around, right? Do you do you have a stable or something to We have keep? absolutely nothing right now. This might take us six months to a year to get the property squared away. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a portable, what it's referred to as a loafing shed. It'll be on skids, right? It's a three-sided 8 by 12 shed that we can move around on the acre property or the two and a half acres that we have so that they don't wear out one part of the dirt right but uh, the, yeah, they'll, they'll be sheltered and fenced in properly mm -hmm. is there any more questions at this time of uh, mr. Summers all right uh, if you would like to take a seat uh, we will hear from staff Okay. all right conditional use case 202403 this is the location map. The zoning map showing the zoning on site as low density residential. Future land use on site is mixed use suburban. This is an aerial map of the site. You can see the, uh, the parcel that the house is on currently. The adjacent lot, these are all under the same ownership. The wooded one is the one that we'll be getting uh, should this be approved, we'll be getting cleared and also used as um, for the horses. Public hearing sign posted on site. 
this is looking west. Uh, you can the, the house is in the background behind those, and then off to the right is the parcel that's going to need to be, have be cleared, and there is that wooded parcel there. As to the uh, the findings. Low density residential has um, under conditional uses. It has agricultural and related. Um, this falls under the section for horses and other domesticated equines kept on site and stables for such animals as a private residential accessory, not among the permitted uses of the district. Minimum lot area of two acres if accessory to a private residential use and a minimum 10 acres for public riding with a maximum of one animal <clears throat> per acre for either use. They have two and a half, just over two and a half acres. Um, the way the regulation is, it's, it's one animal per acre. Um, given the size of what we're dealing with, I think that the addition of a third with a half acre for less than half a horse. I don't see any conflicts there. Um, as to the criteria for first one, general compatibility, the proposed use of miniature horses would be conducted and operated in a manner that is compatible with adjacent properties and other properties in the immediate area. These lots are part of the platted subdivision Ponderosa, that's a clue, and have a 20-foot private bridle path on the rear of these lots. The miniature horses would be kept in the rear yard and approximately 36 inches tall. Uh, facilities and services, the applicant will use the existing utilities. On-site circulation, ingress and egress will be accessible through the existing driveway connection to Rodney Street. Nuisances and hazards. The applicant is requesting the use of miniature horses, which are much smaller than full-size horses. The applicant will be responsible to maintain the grounds and stated they would be kept in, uh, they would keep a landscape buffer for neighboring properties. Solid waste. Solid waste service will be provided in the same manner as the existing principal dwelling. The waste from the miniature horses will be incorporated into a small compost pile mixed with hay and other used natural materials for future grass fertilizer. Screening and buffering, there are no buffering requirements for the proposed use. Signage and lighting, no signage is proposed for this conditional use. Site characteristics, size, shape, location, and topography of the site appears adequate to accommodate the proposed use. Site requirements such as uh, <clears throat> setbacks, height, distance, and all site characteristics will be confirmed during land use approval. That land use approval is part of the permitting process when they come in for uh, clearing the land and for the installation of the uh, stable. Specific use requirements, there are no additional conditional use requirements. Staff findings, the applicant has submitted documentation that addresses all conditional use criteria. Staff recommends approval of the conditional use as requested. And that concludes staff's presentation. All right, thank you. Does the board have any questions of the staff? I got a question. Um, so we approve this and he sells his property. Mm -hmm. The next guy comes in and says he wants a horse. This is specific to the miniature horses, your approval. And okay. in fact, if you would like, you could add that as a condition yeah. to the uh, approval if y'all go in that direction. And so are minim m miniature horses defined in some way? I mean, one man's miniature is another man. Yeah. It's not a Clydesdale, it's a... Yeah, yeah that's uh, it falls under a domesticated equine, according to our uh, <laughs> our land development code. Okay. If I may. Yep. Yeah. Please, the applicant yeah, can. The codes and everything, the ordinance, they, they differentiate between a miniature pot-bellied pig, right? And the basic thing here is is actually the size, right? Uh, it took me a while to uh, 
get my head or get some people's head wrapped around that what a miniature horse was because I kept on getting the argument a horse is a horse is a horse right well so is a pig right <laughs> right but you know that the, if there's a picture I gave a picture of a size reference of what these things look like I think y'all have might have it on your computer that's my wife right here she's 411 and that thing only yeah. didn't even come up to her waist you know so yeah. you know it's I see what you, I see what your concern is but you know there is such a thing as a miniature horse and there's there's actually, uh, uh, they breed these things for shows and everything, believe it or not. You know, we're not going to do any of that. We just want a couple of pets. But these things are <coughs> that tall. Yeah. So, I yeah. fully understand that. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there other horses in this uh, subdivision? Well, what we have is, uh, also, oh, right there she is. Yeah. Right. But uh, there's a, I think it's on the next slide, I suppose. Uh, over across from our house within like three quarters of a mile is uh, a, a, there's a farm over there has 25 of these things what miniature or miniatures miniatures all right miniatures within within three quarters of a mile from us over in what is that thousand oaks over that way yep there it is that one mm -hmm. yeah mini horses right there's our house and then boom across chem strand and over there there's a nine acre parcel over there that's LDR2 and they have 25 of the little guys, right? And going in the opposite direction down along Chemstrand, and no, excuse me, along uh, Kingsfield, there's, <clears throat> I don't know, we saw them this morning, there's eight or 10 full-size cattle down there along the road, right? So there is animals spotted all around us. The, the more I pay attention, the more I see, right? But, uh, yeah, the, yeah the, <coughs> they're full-size cows and donkeys down at that end on that parcel. But, you know, on, across the road there in Thousand Oaks, that's a subdivision over there, too, and she, that lady has 25 of them. Matter of fact, when she first moved in, we've become pretty good friends with her. So, yeah, so we've been getting some training from her. Any other questions? What about the uh, stable... Uh, that uh, structure they propose with that, is there any issues with that in the code? So it would need to be uh, <clears throat> behind the uh, principal dwelling as, as far as for your setback. And um, let me look up one other thing while I'm sitting here. So is that a conditional? issue or is that that's just a, a regular setback issue okay. um, is there a size uh, limitation to that accessory structure it, it can go up to 50% the size of the primary um, and it does need to be um, as part of that land use approval for that not specific to this conditional use but it would need to um, be 50 feet off from a property line and 130 feet from any dwelling on the property of another landowner. Can I use building a movable? Right. So when he comes in for land use approval for that, <laughs> um, on the site plan submitted, the staff's going to show where the area it can go. So it has to be, did you say 50 feet off? Off the property line. Off the property line. And 130 from a residence that would be on an, a separate piece of property. And, you know, as, as uh, I'm sorry, um, as was stated, you know, this subdivision was platted with a, uh, with several bridle paths called out on the plat. So um, I don't think from a land use standpoint, the addition of, Domesticated equines uh, would be completely out of character Start with what with the, paths. the intention, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you go to that one slide where uh, I'm going to leave that buffer, right? Mm -hmm. This will help answer your question. Sorry. Yeah, that one there. You see, that's a right behind that piece of brush right there. There's actually a privacy fence, you know, from the neighbors to go all the way down there. But I'm going to leave it 12 to 15 feet, you know, roughly, about from me to you, right, all the way on the property line. And the 
we're going to fence inside that, if that makes any sense. And then the next slide, I guess. Uh, it's the one where it showed where I was clearing out the inside of that lot. And maybe it didn't make it, but I got it right here. But the, yeah, everything's going to be contained. I mean, the, if for anybody to want to know they're back there, they're going, really going to have to try. In other words, they're going to have to come on our property and weed through the briars and brambles over there or come through our backyard to see them. Because hmm. the way the land sits, yeah, there's only two houses that's going to be able to see them, and ours is one of them. I was just thinking, in when we have a hurricane or bad weather, mm -hmm. you're going to need some place that you can well, put actually, them in. Yeah, well, actually, if you go back to the yeah. overhead shot of the yeah. house. Oh. I got a plan for that. There too. you go. Right there. You see the build, not, not the green awning, but the building right there in the middle of our lot? Mm -hmm. Right there. That one there? Yeah. That, 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 that's a shed utility. I call it a barn. It's not a barn, but I, I call it a barn. But on the right, on the front left side of that is like a one car uh, stall, right? Just put them in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it, you know, it, the the parcel to the left of the house there, yeah, that one there. That 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 that's where all this is going to occur. And the only one that's really going to be able to see that is the house here to the right with the pool. His name's Neil. He, he wants to buy carrots and feed the things already, right? But he can look across the yard. He's gonna be the only one that's gonna be able to see him because there's a brush line between uh, the house just to the north of Neil. That one there, that's pretty thick. You can see through there now when the leaves are off, but when the leaves come on, you can't see. And then uh, to the house to the south of us right there, the, the one in uh, that one. I've talked to her, and the only way she's going to be able to see those horses is if she's standing in her corner way over here, and they're down there towards the end of our house. That's the only way they're going to be able to see them. They're, they're going to be masked real well, and everybody so, I talk to, you know, they're, they're excited about it. So he wouldn't have to come to us to clear that property that he's clearing if he wasn't putting miniature horses on. Correct, okay. correct. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to bring bulldozers in there. It's going to be a forestry mulcher. Correct. He, that, that would fall under a land disturbance permit. Um, and, and as I was explaining, you know, so each zoning district, you have A through F, all right? A is your purpose statement. B is your allowed uses outright. C is your conditional uses. When you get to D, that's where all the building requirements are with the specific setbacks for that. And this regarding the horses is falls under D, outside of the conditional uses. And just so you all know, that picture is a little bit deceiving. Hurricane Sally, there was a twister down in that lot. There's not near as many trees now as there was when that picture was taken. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. I think that uh, the board's ready to entertain a motion uh, regarding CU 2024-03. With your motion, please state whether or not you adopt the staff's findings of facts as presented by staff. If for any reason you do not accept staff's findings, please go through all the criteria and address each one specifically as to why you do not occur, do not concur, with staff's findings and provide substitute findings. Do we have a motion? I move we uh, accept staff's findings and approve this conditional use for the horses. Okay. Second, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have any discussion? Uh, I would uh, add. Uh, if in that approval that this conditional use be uh, 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 specific to miniature horses uh, and not full size horses. Correct, so you know, he said the number three. Um, full size horses, he would be limited to two. 
because it's one acre for each. Um, the miniature size is, you know, half size, half an acre. Um, that's a staff interpretation that that would be fine. Does he need to restate my motion? Restate sure, his if motion? you'd like to, yes. I mean. So um, I move we accept the staff recommendation and approve the conditional use provided we limit the use to miniature horses. Yeah. Okay. And you second? Second. Okay. okay. All those, uh, any, any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed, we have six to zero in favor. Congratulations to your miniature horses. Nothing is involved as a borrowed you know? Never is. Nothing is involved as a borrowed I appreciate the uh, vice chairman handling uh yeah thanks the for last throwing key. me in the fire yeah that. that's right <laughs> i'm afraid my throat might not have made it all the way through and uh it's good to see everyone here to i believe uh madam attorney do we have anything you have anything don't we no. have an administrative appeal i have something yes so yeah i think the clerk <laughs> is going to tell us about it I, um, the next regular meeting, February 21st, is only going to be for this administrative appeal, but I need two more people to fully commit before I send a confirmation. Because I have Avi and Michael. I will fully commit at this point in my life that I plan on I, being here. Okay. I committed to a certain time. But... Oh, I thought you meant today. No, no, no. You're committed till too. 11. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we knowing the history of these, It'll sometimes at longer. eleven o'clock we're just getting warmed up good. Yeah. Uh, so if that, yeah, so I've got a I've got a meeting. I've got the, it's a Zoom call at eleven. Uh, it's a staff meeting that I have to get to. Is there how many do we have now? Three. Three and Three. a half. Three. Do we have one more? Okay. okay, Marty. Uh, I thought I replied back. Yes. For the twenty-first of February. Because you, because I didn't reply to the, the days. Okay. Okay. And I saw the other one, and I think I replied back yesterday. Okay. So we have, so we can do that. So we have Ross. We have Mrs. Smith. Probably present. And uh, the vice chairman and Marty. Most likely, but I'll move it back three. Okay. okay. I think we've got and me. <laughs> providing I survive, uh, so I guess we'll we'll have we'll scrape up four people yes. at least. I booked the room for the whole day, but it's the only case, so hopefully it won't be the um, all day. And I've already got a case lined up for March, uh, just a normal conditional use, and a potential another appeal scheduled for April. So, is our only case the administrative appeal yes. in February? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I'm not scheduling anything else for that February meeting. Is this the one where the town, town home and uh, uh, residential uh, single family? Uh, no, sir, this is a uh, regarding a cell tower that was approved by the okay. Development Review Committee. Okay. Well, if there's no other business, anything else for us, Ms. Rachel or Andrew? Thank you. Okay, our attorneys cleared us, so I think we can adjourn this meeting. <laughs>